Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to our, our Sunday afternoon service on RCF Live. Um, we appreciate everyone who's here with us in person and on live stream. Um, more than you know, it really blesses us to see the people join in <clears throat> fellowship with us. Mm -hmm. um, I have Rebecca Cutliff and Amber Magnus, myself, Debbie Gebhardt. We're going to continue in Pastor Walter's manual, Ministering to the Sick. Do you have the cover? Yeah. Yes, you do. <clears throat> ministering to the Sick. And um, we, last week we talked about Paul's thorn in the flesh. And uh, specifically, we're, these are difficult scriptures to interpret. This mm -hmm. week we're going to continue in that same scripture, that same passage of scripture um, <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to talk about the word infirmities and what that actually means. Um, and it, <clears throat> it can be misinterpreted as sickness, but in, in context, it is not talking about sickness. And we're going to clarify what it is talking about so that we understand the scriptures better. Yes. Mm -hmm. And have a full understanding of the scriptures. Um, would one of you want to start with prayer? Rebecca. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, we thank you so much that we are able to at any time come before you individually or um, together with our um, brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we just are so thankful for your word and we're so thankful for all that you have um, given us and all that you do for us. And Lord, I just ask you to help us um, hear your word today, um, to hear you speak to us and just... Um, use it and apply it in our in our lives mm -hmm. in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. <clears throat> so we're going to start off with second corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 and we read this last week but we're going to focus on this particular portion of that scripture therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches and necessities in per persecutions and distress for christ's sake for when i am weak then am i strong out of all the phrases and words that we have studied the word infirmities comes with the lar <clears throat> longest range of meaning uh, it can it can mean sickness but in this particular case it, it doesn't mm -hmm. we're gonna figure out what that means this requires that the word be translated through context to determine what form of weakness is being discussed you have to look at the whole context of the scripture in order to understand what this uh, how this word should be translated yeah. <clears throat> context is the setting of the scriptures before and after the use of the word so the Greek word for infirmities is asthenia. Vines translates this particular word as a want of strength or weakness, indicating an inability to produce results. The Dictionary of the New Testament Theology tells us that the word embraces a full range of physical, emotional, social, economical, and even spiritual incapabilities. <clears throat> Sorry. It is found 24 times in the New Testament. That's a lot of times it's used. Mm -hmm. uh, nine times it is used as sickness and disease. Six times it is used as human weakness or inability. Nine times it is used to describe physical weakness induced by man through human oppression. Obviously, in this particular case, that's how this word is being translated. We studied last week the tremendous amount of human oppression Paul was under. Uh, in this particular passage of scripture. Yeah. I want to bring to your attention to the weakness or asthenia of Christ brought about through his crucifixion. This is, I found this really interesting when I was studying this, uh, uh, talking about the weakness of Christ. I don't think I've ever thought of Christ having a weakness, but that's not what that's me. <laughs> so I was really, I was really captivated by that. I was like, wow, that's true. There was that, that time. So we're gonna read 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse four. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Here, weakness is used as being overpowered by man. And that's why I found that interesting. And mm -hmm. it wasn't talking about Christ's weakness, weakness as in the way we think of weakness, right. like you're weak. Like we have a weakness. <clears throat> yeah. Right. It was talking about him, how he was overpowered by man. Christ was too weak to defend himself. Mm -hmm. The context of this word limits its translation to weakness or infirmity brought about through bodily injury. Whew. Uh, 
we were having a discussion this morning about <laughs> I I, uh, I don't like to I personally do not like to see people in pain or to or to hear about their pain or anything that they've experienced physically. Um, and uh, Pastor and I were having this a discussion this morning before service about how badly Christ suffered for us mm -hmm. and how he was unrecognizable as even a human being. And um, and that's why I gave a sigh of like, whew, because it was, he was weak for us. Mm -hmm. um, we bring this out because Paul only speaks about his infirmities in this same setting as found in our text. So we're going to read Galatians chapter 4, verses 13 through 15. You know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. In my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessed, the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. So take note of that phrase at the first. When it, in the first first reread, it said, "You know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached." The gospel unto you at the first. This is extremely important in understanding the context of his writing. Remember we said what happens before and after a particular word is really important when you're studying the context. So it is in direct reference to his first missionary journey to the region of Galatia, where Paul visited the cities of Antioch, Iconium, Derbe, and Lystra. In Acts chapter 14, the account of Paul's first missionary journey is recorded. The setting in verses 1 through 18 begin with the great with great success where many of the Jews and Gentiles believed they were having success in the beginning mm -hmm. it ends in much op opposition when the unbelieving Jews stirred up trouble for the apostles and wanted to stone them badly <laughs> <laughs> the apostles were made aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derby in Lystra a man crippled from his mother's womb is healed by the apostles when the people of the city saw what the apostles had done they called them Greek gods and wanted to burn sacrifices unto them <clears throat> the apostles the apostles stopped them by steering them towards god and we pick up the events in verse 19 of acts chapter 14 and there came thither certain jews from antioch and iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead howbeit as the disciples stood Round about him he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. So we see that Paul's first missionary journey was met with much opposition. And like <clears throat> Pastor Walter pointed out that, that phrase at the first is talking about this particular missionary journey to Galatia. He was stoned and left for dead, which no doubt brought about physical weakness and injury. Mm -hmm. So they stoned him, and they they literally stoned him so badly they thought he was dead mm -hmm. and left him outside in the middle of nowhere, probably. Um, and but we know that he wasn't dead because his disciples were around him when he rose up. Um, but according to Acts chapter fourteen, verses twenty through twenty one, he was stoned and injured outside of Lystra, and the next day he went to Derby. It is there in Derby that it is believed this specific reference to the Galatians is recorded because. Galatians 4.13 says, You know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And so he's talking, the infirmity he's referring to is this particular case when they would have seen how badly he was bruised and beaten. Because bruises, I don't know about you, but when I get bruised, they hurt. it lasts a long yeah, time. Yeah, it lasts a long time. Uh, and, and they just don't go away. And if he was beaten that stone that badly, he would have physically looked it. So he's referring to the infirmities he's referring to is the stoning he would have received that was recorded here. <clears throat> it, is not how, it is not known how long they were in Derby, but afterwards they went back into Lystra, then into Iconium, and back to Antioch. 
Let's read Galatians 4, 13 through 15 again so that we might understand the context in which the word infirmity is being used. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. It's interesting, isn't it? Because um, <clears throat> if he was stoned, he probably would have gotten hit in the face. <laughs> His yeah. eyes would have been bruised as well. So keep that in mind as we continue this study of infirmities. Knowing the events of Paul's first missionary journey becomes extremely important as to what the source of his infirmities were. Was it sickness and disease that attached itself to him through the course of his life and ministry? Or was it the weakness or illness that was brought about through human oppression? Mm -hmm. We just read that that's the case. It was clearly human oppression, oppression. where he was suffering. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's no doubt that the effects of being stoned and left for dead were very visible. Mm -hmm. Whether he was in Lystra, Derby, Iconium, or even Antioch, the people in all these places would have seen, to whatever degree, the effects that being stoned and left for dead would have had on his physical body. It would have been unusual for the Galatians to see him and not be affected emotionally and be moved to help him. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's true. You know, when you would see someone suffering that badly, you, you would see it. You'd be moved and want to help them yeah. um, mm -hmm. in most cases. <clears throat> Even though his body had taken such a great beating, he still continued to move from city to city. It's powerful that he didn't let that stop him. Yeah. Yeah. It is easy to understand that his infirmity was only temporary and not some horrendous eye disease, as so many have assumed. I, 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 I don't know that I've heard that um, before, but I thought that was interesting, that people, have, people automatically assumed that, you know, when he said, I want to pluck my own eyes, you would have plucked your eyes out to give them to me, that he was maybe suffering from an eye disease. Um, when, uh, as Pastor Walter has laid out for us, when you study the context of, of what actually happened in that particular event he's referring to, you can understand that he probably had some black and blue eyes mm -hmm. from stones. Some have used Galatians 6.11 with the term found in Galatians 4.15. not the case. We're going to read that in just a second. Galatians 4.15. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. So in verse in Galatians 6.11, the Greek word for large is in reference to the length of a letter and not in reference to how big the letters were themselves. So the letter itself was large. It was a mm -hmm. long letter. Um, the term found in Galatians 4.15 is an allegorical term used to describe the compassion they had for him at the time due to bodily injury he had received while bringing the gospel into the city. So he didn't, they, they wouldn't have plucked their eyes out because he had a disease, but because he had just been stoned and beaten and they, they had compassion for him. Every time Paul uses the word infirmity in reference to himself, it is used in the context of human oppression, which we already know he suffered a lot of human oppression. In 2 Corinthians 12.10, it is no different. We're going to read that one more time. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. When, With the amount of human oppression he went through, it's no wonder that he would have found strength in Christ to continue doing yeah. what he was called to do. That, that anointing, that grace that was upon him to do the work that he did. Um, which impacts us today still. Yeah. It, 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 it was the only thing that would have kept him going because not many people would have been able to, to survive. Go from city to city, it had and to be God's be stoned and whipped <laughs> yeah. and beaten and storms and prison. No one would have done that. Mm -hmm. um, notice, even the language of 2 Corinthians 12.10 strongly refers to human oppression with words like reproaches, necessities, persecutions, and distresses. In its setting, the word infirmities can hold no other meaning. The word infirmity, then, is in reference to, this, to his same inability to carry out the responsibilities of the ministry. In the end, God tells him, my grace is sufficient for you. And that's found in verse 9 of that same chapter. <clears throat> in other words, my ability is all you need to carry out your ministry. Mm -hmm. 
we must understand that there are two kinds of grace found in Scripture. The first grace is for salvation. We're going to read Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. This grace was never intended to leave us in bondage. It was always designed to redeem us. Isn't that interesting? My mm -hmm. grace is sufficient for you. I'm not going to leave you in bondage. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put anything on you. The word grace is the Greek word charis. It first means a gift or unmerited favor. The idea, the idea of this word is the ability that flows through this favor. According to God's plan, grace was never designed to keep us captive to the curse of the law, which sickness is part of. <clears throat> Rather, it is to redeem us. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thought that was really interesting um, how Pastor tied that in, that uh, God said, my grace is sufficient for you, He, which includes not putting sickness on you, mm -hmm. redeeming us from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. Grace holds another uh, concept in that God empowers us to fulfill our call, office or call. Grace gives us his ability or strength to carry out a certain task or office. Scripture reveals to us that Paul was to fulfill ministry, his ministry with great suffering. And that's found in Acts 9, 15 through 16. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. It's powerful. He, he told him he was going to suffer, and he really truly did. Grace then was the power and ability to fulfill that office, to be able to go through those things and endure those things to fulfill the call that he had on his life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ephesians 3, 7, 3. It's no wonder he went through so much, though. I mean, he, he, he wrote half the New Testament, and how we need that, you know, and the enemy definitely did not want, want him, him to do that. He would have done anything in his power, used anyone to attack him so great, and he did. He was constantly trying to, yeah, tear him down, attack But then him. we see the fulfillment of my grace is sufficient for you, for he for he fulfilled what he was called to do. Mm -hmm. he, That's right. he, he, didn't, he didn't give up. He didn't stop. Devil Amen. lost. He did lose. <laughs> <laughs> he lost a long time ago. Yeah. Ephesians <laughs> 3, 7 through 8. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Notice how grace is being used here and how Paul was using it, for it is in direct reference to his, to his apostolic office or call. These scriptures absolutely show beyond a shadow of a doubt that Paul knew the grace, the grace that Jesus spoke of when he said, my grace is sufficient. Paul knew it was in reference to the grace to stand in the office of an apostle. Christ's promise to strengthen and support the apostle Paul throughout his life and ministry never suggests that Christ refused to heal him. That's just ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> to think that Christ would refuse to heal anyone mm -hmm. and that someone would um, assume that and teach that to other people for shame. Uh, throughout this study, we have learned that the setting of, of Paul's thorn in the flesh was a life of suffering and persecution brought about through human oppression that often left him weak and infirm. It never suggests that Paul had contracted some incurable disease that God refused to heal. And um, I know we talked, we focused a lot on what Paul suffered, but Paul had to have focused on the grace. And that's how he was able, to, instead of focusing on what he suffered and what he went through, he kept his, um, his mind renewed to the fact that God's grace was sufficient for him. Yes. No matter what he went through, no matter what he suffered, no matter what anyone tried to do to him, God's grace was sufficient for him to do what he was called to do. So was there anything that either of you wanted to add? Uh, no, just when I was reading through this and when I read through it before, it just made me think like a... Uh, you know different things that go on in our lives mm -hmm. and stuff like that and it's definitely not what Paul went through and definitely not what Jesus went through so maybe rely on the Lord and know that his grace is sufficient for us too and that we can get through anything that we're going through that not to diminish you know not to say um you know not to have compassion for someone who's going through something or not to not have compassion, right. but I just make it, I look at it and think, okay, my situations can get resolved. Mm -hmm. They're not. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I don't, if I, if I had to go through that Paul went through, 
you would have had to rely a whole lot, whole lot more, more. <laughs> on the yeah. grace. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's um, it's really important. Um, okay, so I remember growing up and watching the cartoons that they made of, you know, like people being stoned. Yeah. And, you know, they may have like a little bit of a cut or something. Yeah. And so when you actually understand the meaning of what that infirmities and understanding how badly beaten he was Mm -hmm. but he was still able to continue Mm -hmm. with god's grace yeah like and walk you can't you can't do that (laughs) in the natural right Mm -mm. so i think it's just extremely powerful yeah the fact that he was let they literally thought he was dead yeah and then he just that day got up the disciples were around him he got up and then the next day they left (laughs) like like that that is powerful truly powerful um well, I hope, I really hope that if anyone ever questioned any of these subjects or, or maybe even uh, thought or believed a certain way and you know, now clearly can see through context and study the truth of the scripture that it has helped anyone. Um, it helped me tremendously in my faith growing up. Um, but yeah, God is good. Thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you guys have a blessed week. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.